So you messed up on something. Maybe you're trying to adjust the topology of your model without it doing this. Or maybe there's just a weird seam line in your normal map that's giving you a frustrating headache. Hello, I'm Thomas, and in this video, I'm going to help you troubleshoot some of the common problems you might face while working with textures and materials in Blender. These tips are especially useful if you're working with an external texturing application such as Substance Painter, or if you're trying to use Blender in your game development pipeline. The first tip is to display UV stretching. In Blender, by default, you can bring up a color filter that will display where any UV stretching is occurring on your model. Now, this is fairly common knowledge, but I just wanted to bring it up because this feature has had a tendency to move around between different versions of Blender. As of 2.83, you can find this feature by going into edit mode, going to the UV editor, under view, display, overlays, and then hitting the checkbox next to stretching. As you can see, this will bring up a color map which will display where any stretching is occurring with dark blue indicating no stretching and steadily progressing from green to orange and red to indicate the intensity of warp that is going on on your UVs. The second tip is to apply transformations such as scale and rotation. Now, anytime you adjust the scale or rotation in object mode instead of edit mode, you need to apply these transformations. Otherwise, when you go to unwrap your model, it'll come out looking like this. And on top of that, these changes will not show up in UV stretching. As you can see, this whole UV face is completely squashed, but it does not show any UV stretching. This happens because Blender doesn't update or change any of the units of measurement on your mesh when you make changes in object mode. Therefore, it doesn't recognize the size difference when you go to unwrap. If this is your issue, simply go back into object mode, hit Control A, and apply rotation and scale. Now, when we go back into edit mode, hit unwrap, problem solved. Also, as another quick tip and a best practice when you're 3D modeling, always hit the checkbox for back face calling. Yeah, this can save you some headaches later on. Simple fix, shift N to recalculate normals. The next tip is how to use UV safe transformations after you've already textured your model. Typically, certain transformations such as bevel or adding loop cuts won't add any distortion to your UVs. However, when you try to move a loop cut such as this, you can see that by just dragging it up and down, it's distorting our UVs pretty badly. Now, say I wanted to add a few extra edge loops on this model. Now, to do that, I could just add in a loop cut like this and then double click G and move it up or down. As you can see, this isn't creating any UV distortions. This can be very useful for adjusting the topology on a number of environment assets, such as vegetation. The next few tips are all about normal maps and all the ways you can mess them up. To start with, have you ever dropped in your normal app and then noticed that you have one really ugly seam line, usually at the same marking where you cut your UVs? Well, this is pretty simple. Just go to your normal map and be sure that it's set to non-color data. Okay, so we no longer have an ugly seam line, but the shading is looking pretty messed up. As you can see, the light isn't moving correctly across our model. Now, this is likely because you're trying to use a DirectX normal. Blender uses an OpenGL workspace. However, if you only have a DirectX normal available and can't export an OpenGL one, there's an easy way to fix this. All we have to do is flip the Y value, which corresponds to the green channel on our normal map. To do this, simply insert an RGB curves node in between your imported normal texture and the normal map node. Then go to the green value and simply flip the ends of the curve. Now, 
Another quick tip is using separate RGB channels like you would in Unreal Engine. As you can see, here we're using a PBR Metal Rough workflow. This means we have several texture maps imported, including a base color, ambient occlusion, metallic, roughness, and our normal map. However, we can use a multi-channel RGB texture like we would if we were working in Unreal Engine. So, I'm just going to delete these three image textures right here. That's our ambient occlusion, roughness, and metallic. And I'm going to import a new texture map. And this texture map actually has our ambient occlusion, metal, and rough committed to the separate values of the red, green, and blue channels. So to use this, all we have to do is import a separate RGB node, plug in our texture, and then separate it accordingly. So the red is our ambient occlusion, green is our roughness, and blue is our metallic value. Now let's discuss some helpful hotkeys. Let's say you want to switch out weapon skins. Select one part of the gun that's using the material you want to switch out. Then hit Shift L to select everything linked to the same material. Now in the materials tab, select the new material you want to switch to. As you can see, it's only applied to the primary object you have selected. We can copy it to all objects by hitting Ctrl L and selecting materials. There you go. Now you have an awesome new Elite Gamer skin. Okay, so maybe this skin isn't dank enough for you. Well, that's okay. Go into Substance Painter, create a new skin, export it to the same location as the previous one, and then in the Shader Editor, hit Alt-R to refresh the texture. Now that's dank. As an added bonus, there are a number of both free and paid add-ons for Blender that will really help speed up the texturing and UV unwrapping workflow. I'll link to a few of my favorites in the description below. Well, thanks for watching and good luck texturing. I hope you found something useful. If you did, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon to receive notifications when I post another video.